Today, we're stepping into the shadows of the 20th century's atomic age to reveal the intriguing tale of Jean Tatlock, the alleged mistress of the father of the atomic bomb, Dr. J. Robert Oppenheimer. Her name may not often appear in our history textbooks, but her influence in the world of nuclear physics, and on Oppenheimer himself, has been a source of much speculation and intrigue. As we sift through the rumors and the facts, we promise an eye-opening exploration of this complex and largely untold story. So let's dive into the truth about Jean Tatlock and her fascinating relationship with one of the most significant figures of the 20th century. Warning! Warning! These women helped create him as a human being of feeling and character, said Patricia Klaus, the writer of An Atomic Love Story, The Extraordinary Women in Robert Oppenheimer's Life, in a 2013 interview with Mercury News. Robert is often described as brilliant and arrogant without friends, but in these relationships, especially with Jean and Ruth, there was a depth of affection that helped make him the person he was. They humanized him, in a way that power politics never did. In the movie, Florence Pugh embodies Jean Tatlock, a past lover of Oppenheimer who tragically passed away prematurely in 1944. Tatlock, born in 1914, was the child of John Tatlock, a distinguished scholar of English medieval literature, and his former student, Marjorie Feldman. Tatlock divided her childhood years between Cambridge and California, while her father presided over the English department at Stanford. While known for her association with Oppenheimer, Tatlock also faced her own struggles with sexual identity during her childhood. She maintained a childhood friendship with poet and author Mae Sarton, and An Atomic Love Story unveils her journey through their correspondences. Last year there was a period where I thought I was a homosexual, she expressed, before later clarifying, I don't love you that way. She summarized, Adolescence is harder even than I had thought. Another shared struggle between Tatlock and Oppenheimer was depression, as mentioned in Atomic Love. After graduating from Vassar College in 1935, Tatlock earned a psychiatry degree from Stanford Medical School and completed her residency at Mount Zion Hospital in San Francisco. Tatlock and Oppenheimer's worlds intertwined at a house party in 1936, when she was a medical student at Stanford and he was a physics professor at the University of California, Berkeley. In Atomic Love, the authors try to decode their relationship. Much about Jean would have pleased Robert, her Vassar Harvard connections and New England pedigree, that she was fluent in French and a quick and critical thinker, that she was comfortable in academia and yet not in awe of it. She had a brother who was soon graduating from medical school at Harvard. She loved poetry and was fascinated with the promise of psychotherapy. Yet the specter of impending war loomed over their future. They embarked on a passionate affair lasting until 1939, during which Tatlock rejected Oppenheimer's marriage proposals twice. Twice they had come close to declaring themselves engaged, but how was it possible to think of fulfilling his needs, of becoming another and caring for children? Sometime that year she told him she could not marry him, the book An Atomic Love Story recounts. Despite their breakup, they continued to be emotionally tethered, they cared too much for each other to stay far apart, the book reveals. Although he tied the knot with Catherine Kitty Poining in 1940, Oppenheimer continued to visit Tatlock in San Francisco as late as 1943. While they were never married, some speculation indicates that Oppenheimer named the Trinity Nuclear Test after a poem by John Dunn, a favorite of Tatlock's, according to the Atomic Heritage Foundation. Much like Kitty Poining, Oppenheimer's wife, Tatlock was a member of the Communist Party, writing articles and reports for the Western Worker, a communist newspaper on the West Coast. Tatlock's communist ties were later used as significant proof against Oppenheimer in the 1954 security hearing that led to the revocation of his security clearance. His 1943 meeting with Tatlock, during his involvement in atomic bomb development at Los Alamos, and while being a family man, was put under intense examination. At his 1954 hearing, he reflected on the encounter. We had been very much involved with one another and there was still very deep feeling when we saw each other. On January 5, 1944, Tatlock was found deceased in her San Francisco apartment. Discovered by her father with her head submerged in the bathtub and an unsigned note nearby. She was merely 29 years old. I am disgusted with everything, penned Tatlock. 
To those who loved me and helped me all love and courage, I wanted to live and to give and I got paralyzed somehow. I tried like hell to understand and couldn't. I think I would have been a liability all my life. At least I could take away the burden of a paralyzed soul from a fighting world. She was diagnosed with clinical depression and her death was determined to be a suicide. There have been suspicions, including those voiced by Tatlock's brother Hugh, that her death was the result of a malicious act by intelligence agents from Los Alamos, but no substantial evidence has surfaced to support this theory. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. See you soon.